Hello and welcome to Thursday Night Knives. I'm your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco, and tonight I am flying solo, but I still have a few things to say about knives, and hopefully you'll join in on the conversation with me and uh, uh, give me your thoughts and your ideas and help fuel this conversation. Tyler, hello and welcome. It's good to see you here, sir. Uh, tonight we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some new knife drops from Essie, Civivi, Bone Daddy Blade Works, a new outfit. Uh, Shirogorov has a, an update to their F3 model. And then we're going to talk a little bit about some things happening in my collection. And uh, and we'll get to a couple of other things after that. Uh, join the conversation and comment with your opinions and questions. And remember that uh, your thoughts, there are no stupid thoughts. Well, that's not true. Uh, but there are no stupid questions. Uh, and, and, and they all work to fuel the conversation. Uh, Jim will put them up on screen and uh, we'll talk about them and we'll mention your name. Wow. All right. Well, what do you say we dive right in? Good to have you. Good to have you. Uh, first, uh, I would like to uh, mention Les de Assis. Uh, we all heard that he died this past weekend. He is the founder of Benchmade and he was their CEO for some 30 years. Uh, stepped down and left uh, the company to his son, uh, left that role to to his son, and uh, but continued uh, steering uh, in, uh, through 2018, 2018. And uh, anyway, we just heard that he died. And, and the man was an innovator, and he leaves behind a legacy, uh, not only innovating and creating such uh, being responsible for creating things like the access lock, but also uh, he was one of the first guys to really have a big knife company that was collaborating with uh, with other accomplished designers. And, uh, you know, it, it sort of uh, set a stage, set the stage for how things are being done today. And um, we just want to express our condolences to the to Assis family and the Benchmade family. It was sad news. Uh, that being said, uh, let's jump into some of the new knives uh, coming out uh, that I've been keeping an eye on. The new SE Expat. Have you heard of the SE Expat line? So uh, this is cool. Uh, there's a, a guy named Expat. That's his handle on uh, the big SE forum. And he was a big, is a big contributor in that forum. And at some point, um, not sure exactly when this happened, uh, several years back, as I know I've been uh, seeing the name for a while, uh, some of his designs started to be uh, made uh, by Essie. The first one was the Camp Cleaver, I believe. It was this giant fat cleaver that had a uh, sort of a drop point. It, it, uh, the, the edge curved all the way up to the, the front top of the, of the cleaver. Pretty cool, uh, pretty cool thing. Well, he's got this new knife out with them, and it's sort of half. Um, machete half big knife. It's a 12 point something inch blade. And if you look at it, uh, as, as, uh, as mentioned in knife news, it looks like a big spade blade, you know, straight out of a stockman, um, uh, uh, slip joint knife. And, uh, so the, the, the intention for this is, uh, you know, all sorts of machete work, uh, light kind of chopping, uh, because, uh, it, it's it's got decent what is a 0.094 uh inch uh blade yeah yes i do too i do too i only have one but it's big and it's awesome <laughs> that's what she said uh so this uh this thing has a if you look at it i i think it's attractive but that handle that handle to me um it, it, it wants a little more on the end. It wants a little bit more of a bird's beak on the end for me. Because that, that thing, the way it widens out at the tip, looks like it's all about chopping. And um, so if this were my knife, I would want a little bit more of a, of a hook at the end, just so I could, I could feel free to chop. In any case, it's got, uh, it's got nice uh, rough canvas micarta handles. It's got a canvas uh, sheath, which is cool to me. It's kind of a throwback to World War II era um, machetes, uh, like the one, the one I have on the wall back there. Um, and uh, actually that's leather, not canvas, but others like that were made of canvas. And uh, it, this just looks like a cool kind of rough and ready kind of thing. And I think it's really cool that an enthusiast is responsible for this and this whole series of knives. Someone who is just showing up uh, to the to the SE forums and speaking their mind. And boom, at some point now they have their own line named after them. That's cool. 
Edwin. Oh, such a pleasure, sir. How are hey, you? Man. Hey, Edwin. I, I, you I all know him as Calo PR. It. I'm sorry. Yes, go ahead, sir. Yes, yes, yes. I just want to hey, say Alex. that as someone that grew up in the Caribbean, uh -huh. I approve that machete. You know, yeah. That easy machete. It works in the tropical forest, so that's great. <laughs> so what do, what do you... Okay, so you're... a. a for those who don't, who don't know, um, Edwin makes these really good videos on YouTube. He just started, actually, but but you've been going at it, gangbusters, and uh, you you are an accomplished Emerson collector. You have some, you have just an incredible collection of Emerson knives, and so I have a question for you as it relates to this uh, machete. Emerson's known for their ergonomics. Uh, how do you feel about the handle on that machete for the kind of work it's supposed to do? I. I think it looks great. You know, I, I haven't seen any video of it, just pictures, but mm -hmm. that's what you want. You want some beefy handle, something that that you know will fill up your, you know, your grip, right? You don't mm -hmm. want anything too curvy or you want something that will fill up your grip there. And I think that will work. It will be nice to handle it in, you know, once it comes out. So how is the uh, channel going, the YouTube channel? How, how are you liking... Um putting your collection up like that it's going great it's going great i'm mostly what i'm trying to do is right uh i think i got a when you started posting videos about your knives and all that i was like oh man let me just start documenting some of this stuff as well right and and basically i'm just putting stuff whatever comes to mind some faqs it will be surprising how some people are sending me private messages about, hey, how you clean your micartas or yeah. how you, you know, how you do some of this basic stuff that, you know, for us, it's a little bit basic, but, you know, if people have some real questions, they, they are, they're enjoying it. I'm getting good feedback. So, so, hey, it's just for fun right now. It's, it's definitely. Well, that, that my car. For that Micarta record. video, hang on, hang on one second. That Micarta video was very welcome because uh, I'm a Micarta fan, and I actually didn't really know uh, what to do. So you got to check out that video if you're if you got some <laughs> grungy old Micarta. I'm sorry, what were you about to say, Edwin? No, I just want for the record. I obviously my main focus is on collecting Emersons, but I got a for Alex. Hey, I got a you know, a <laughs> 31, right? Beautiful. I should say I'm not. I'm not a. I don't handle. I took out the clip and tomorrow I'm getting a, how you say, that cover just to make it flat there. And oh, nice. yeah. Are you going to keep I it just, in a little slip? Exactly. I just use it like a slip joint or, you know, just, it's very small, right? This is a yeah. Norwoods, right? Uh, yeah. So, but I'm liking it. I'm liking it. No, no question about that. So. Beautiful. Alex, sir, good to see you, man. I'm, I'm glad to see you're watching the show. Hey, man. <laughs> good to see you. So, uh, Edwin, I'm I'm glad you uh, I'm glad you popped in. What is your most recent and cherished uh, uh, purchase? So I got that thirty that Sabenza thirty one on Friday, and I got this really rare. Uh, I have it down here. I got this really rare one of the original Super Commanders. This is. <laughs> It's called True Satin Finish, so it's really rare. You might not see it that yeah. well on the, on the camera, but it's a really rare finish and really difficult to find. So I'll carry it, but I'll I'll treat it, you know, a little bit. Uh, so what's careful. the True Satin? The True Satin means that basically Ernie Emerson went there and, and did that finish instead of your normal, uh, you know, stone on wash right or what i got you so i got you yeah it's just that just little details right just <laughs> part of the collectors uh... <laughs> yeah yeah and and actually uh it's funny because uh what you're saying there you know alex from alex's knife box who was just commenting he is very much like that he you know you you never just see a, a plain jane there's always some personalized tweak Definitely. and i love that it's it's uh you know uh I do that. I've done that with a number of knives, and it's it's not to make it. Uh... Hey, Josh, good to see you, sir. Oh, look at this. What do you know? Reground Whoa. by Josh at Razor Edge. This thing I, is my sharpest knife by far. Really, I mean, it's like it is like a pa piece of paper, like strong S thirty five VN paper. But he got that 
that hollow grind so beautifully. And if you know, um, if you know the XM18 Spanto, you know that it's a, it's a thick kind of chunker of a blade. And uh, he saved it. Beautiful job. Hi, Josh. <laughs> also, <laughs> oh. I, I want to mention that. I don't know if the guys know this, but Les, Les the Assis actually collaborated with Ernie, right? To That's to right. Which that made CQC7 on 94. And that's the first emerson that i was exposed to back in 90 97 you know i don't want to mention right. my age here but <laughs> back in 97 or so 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 yeah yeah definitely one of the big guys uh you know yeah yeah that was that was big news to hear you know it um it to me it's kind of like when you hear a famous musician that you've always admired um yeah passing away yeah, so. I, I did not realize i was looking at some of his information and he started in 79 you know yeah hand making ballets ballet songs and it's like wow yeah this guy had definitely a, a long career in, you know sense. i thought a, a, a cool detail was uh the guy that he had grinding his first uh, ballet uh, his first butterfly knives uh, was the same guy i'm sorry i'll have his i have his name close at hand uh, was the same guy who, oh, Jody Sampson, the guy who did all the Conan the Barbarian swords, which, you know, oh, shaped cool. my childhood along with, um, yes, yes, yes. along with the, the evil witch uh, of Conan. <laughs> definitely, uh, definitely. Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. Pretty interesting. So, uh, uh, any, any new, uh, any new things on the horizon for you? So I got some, how you say, some pimping work happening and. And I'm waiting for some lotteries to start happening. And, uh, you know, I'm, I, mean, I, I definitely want a Micarta large 731. Mm -hmm. So I know that model got a little bit of hate on the, on the interwest, but I love it. I love that look. You know, it's like, oh, man, that's awesome. So, you know, that Micarta on that. Is that what got the hate, the, the new shape? I think Alex might know better than me. You know, he's more into the plug into the you know latest news on that but yeah i think people were hating on that it's like hey i i love it i love it so i cannot wait for for getting that can't wait for the star tack umnumzan project oh. you're doing oh yeah 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 at razor edge oh yes. that'll be cool any comments <laughs> double detents so i uh, do you no i you know i my exposure with Emerson's was, uh, again, in 97, but I did not know I had an Emerson at that moment. Mm -hmm. And then I started really in the collecting thing, like in 2010 or so of Emerson. So the double T D10, I don't know the history behind it. I think it was just one of those. Let's try it. And now, yeah, they're now back to single D10s. You know, I start. Their single D10 is, is, is crazy very, smooth. Uh, my, I, I have uh, my first Emerson. It was a 2000 Commander. Is a 2000 Commander that has a double detent, and and uh, uh, I I thought he did that from the very beginning as a as a, a retention thing, uh, because it's uh, you know a knife intended for uh, guys just jumping out of planes and and crawling up on beaches and stuff. That it was to have that second detent to just to hold the help hold the blade in. Yeah, I, I, let me tell you, when I was uh, in possession of the Benchmade CQC7, I was a college guy working as a helper of a towing company. Mm -hmm. And we were cutting. I was, I don't know what steel was that. I probably ATS something. 34, probably. 34, but we were cutting through everything with that. You know, it was performing great. So that's basically what solidified my, you know, my fandom and the whole thing, you know, so. So, yeah. so whatever, whatever happened to that? So it was the owner's uh, knife. And me as a poor college kid, he was like, hey, and there was, I remember, there was a Recon one on the table. He had a good selection, and I gravitated to that tanto. I'm like, oh, let me try that. He's like, okay, use it, and then every Sunday you need to drop it. You know, Again, this is in the 90s. You, know, you need to bring it back, sharp it, make it sure it's, it's back to normal. And and use it and, and some of the young guys here might not know but as a towing company we will show up first to 
to the you know, days in the Caribbean, other times. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the police and the EMT, they won't show up until like 45 minutes later, right? Or, or 50 minutes later. And sometimes we needed to go in and, and cut seat belts or, you know, take out people from cars and all that. And, and it was all through using knives, using cold steels, using Emerson's, you know, it was. It wow. Was pretty so cool. You were expected to be first responders, basically, as the towing. Well, it's. We were there waiting for the cops to show up for one hour. And if we were smelling gas, you need mm. to go in and you know, yeah. to the person, right? So, <laughs> yeah. You know, whatever your moral, <laughs> you know, some people might not go in, but, you know, you need to decide on that. Yeah, I'm sure most people would. <laughs> that's that's insane. Um, so it was all happening with these, with the Emersons, the Benchmaids, and the... And, and the, I think the Recon one, the Cold and, Steel Recon one, and the Benchmade 67. I and again I had no idea at the time. Later when I came to the US and I started record. Oh, okay, let me start watching these guys, you know, and, and, and I'm going back and trying to follow them. So Edwin, obviously you like uh, uh tactical knives. Uh what do you think of the the big giant cold steel knives? This is my brand new Luzon which uh, found its way onto an Amazon purchase recently. That's it's a, nice. You got that yeah. this week or something like that? That's, it's that for steak. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. Uh, I got it. I did get it this week. It, it's, um, you know, they, they make these big, as you know, they, these big knives, but this is their first sort of budget one in quite some time. It's eight CR 13 MOV steel. It's uh, their, their grivery, you know, sort of GRN handle. And uh, and it's a liner lock, which is very rare for um, cold steel. And they have that secondary lock there, right? Yeah. And you know what? On this knife, I'm actually using it and glad it's there. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm using the lock, but I'm not using the knife. But I am swinging it around, you know. Uh, so that lock reassures me. I mean, the, I feel like the uh, liner lock is quite stout, and when it's engaged. Uh, it's good, but it's not broken in yet. So you have yeah. to make sure that you you hit it hard. It's kind of like a new Emerson. New Emerson to me, every time has a has a wicked break in period. And right oh. when I'm about at my wit's end, it blossoms into this beautiful, beautiful knife. Oh yeah, man. I have yes, definitely, definitely, definitely. And I love it. I love those large cold steels. I'm definitely getting that uh oh. That Chris one, the the one you were showing to Alex last time. The... Oh, what, what? You mean what? Are you talking about what? Oh, this? <laughs> yes, yes. That, I'm definitely getting one of those if they're still in the market. You know. That, yes. Any opportunity. Hang on, uh, Jim. There was a comment before about um, uh, someone giving me a, a tip on a manly knife. Oh, from Barry. Hi, Bob. I want to give you a heads up. Manly knives, Bulgari. Sale on the Peak One, fourteen C twenty eight and forty bucks. So, what is the Peak One? I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember which one the Peak One is. Oh, oh, I think that's the one that I like. Actually, are you familiar with the Manly knives? No, un- until they came up in the news regarding closing their U.S. shop. Yes, uh, focusing in the. So I, no, I, I, I believe it was the Peak. Uh, was a knife that I was seeing a lot of videos on maybe a year and a half ago as sort of uh, just like a perfect EDC. I, I remember uh, Kevin Cleary uh, really liked his, and I, I believe uh, Nick Shabazz did a video on on his, but, you know, very thin, slicey blades and reasonable design and kind of uh, kind of what kind of what's in fashion. I <laughs> like big, unreasonable yeah. designs. And, and uh, definitely. But, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. By the way, I have one of your favorite designs. Uh, what is it? Uh, well, anyway, sax, Barry, right. thanks for the tip. I appreciate it. Oh, the, the sax. sax. Right. The sax is my very favorite. And and so this is a, a custom version, right? Yeah, this is the custom, but but again, the production very similar, right? It's, it's, yeah, the the blade on on the produ- on on the custom is slightly broader, and I love the way it looks. Yeah. I mean, it, it's almost imperceptible, but but you did a video with that and the. Did you do a video with that and the um, production version? I did a video, probably. Uh, no, I haven't done a video on the socks yet. Socks yet, not yet. Okay, okay. I did the fixed blade of the socks. 
So how do you feel about Shergorov? Do you know? Uh, do you oh, have I, any? Yeah, Shigorov, they're very nice. Yeah. Do you and have? I saw that they're making, they're making some subtle changes, right, on the blades and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. There, so I was going to talk about the F3, which is the oh man, it's it is beautiful, and and they've. Uh, so it's got a larger size blade, which is which is appealing to me. They've done they've done a bunch of tweaks to this knife that it it's, it's not a new knife, but they've made a number of tweaks to it, and and it's kind of rolling out almost as one. It's a small batch custom, is what they call it, and uh, and uh, it has uh, dimensions that are all the same, except uh, you know. So it's got the same length of, of blades. Uh, oh, here it is, three point seven four. That's what I was looking for. 3.74 and uh the shape is a little bit different That's it's beautiful. the same size but the shape is different they put on some the the chamfer on top and it's more of a, a more of a belly coming up to that tip i i think i think we have to get um alex to buy one of these so that he can yeah. send it to me uh so i can check it out <laughs> Alex needs to get one of this for sure. That's well, the question about it. He is a he is a definitely uh, an aficionado of the um, Russian knives and the sort of Eastern European. Yeah, mm, sure. Go what on. is the price of one of these guys, Alex, or or anyone in the chat? What hmm. did they say in the article? Or... No, I'm looking at the article right now, and it it doesn't mention that. Um, what they do talk about is this random pattern uh, of carbon fiber, which looks pretty cool to me i'm i'm uh i'm very kind of on again off again with carbon fiber but i tend to gravitate more towards the irregular patterns like the marble carbon fiber that kind of thing and uh, this one kind of looks like that to me it almost looks um actually jim can you scroll up to the picture it almost looks a bit like um oh, urban camo or not urban camo what the hell is that called digicam kind of has a little digicam mm -hmm. look yeah. almost a little randomized pattern there yeah that looks great that looks great so uh they have also used recently the kickstop mechanism do you know that the yeah. uh yeah, yeah. what do you what do you think of that i like it any uh, you know eight eight ninety five pretty good man so he's, so he's okay. It's up there. He's up there. You know what though? I, I sit here. I say, "Oh God!" But it all depends on on where you're, on where you're. You know, Marvin Carp. Yes, exactly. Thank you, sir. I agree. Um, but it all depends where your tastes lie, and and you know how, what your resources are. Um, definitely. You know, definitely. there are certain knives like I look at your all of your custom Emersons, and I think. I would pay expense. I would pay a lot of money for a custom Emerson. Um, I would and, have to sell a lot to justify it, but what's up? Yeah. I, do you consider, or the guys might know, is this a, a custom? Is considered a custom or this is a, a production? You know, is this going through his hands? Are you, wait, are you talking about the Shiro? The Sh yeah, the Shiro. Uh, they're calling it a small batch custom, and I've I've heard that term used before. Someone, please help us out. Doesn't that mean they they use a different bearing system or like roller something? Oh God, people are cringing. I know as I as I as I butchered this information. So someone help me out here. Uh, but I know that their small batch customs are a thing. Production. Okay. Production but so what does small batch custom mean? Is that like uh <laughs> limited edition product? Yeah. You know, something like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it just means cool. Cause it, it really does look like that. I'm, I'm sorry for the, for the overuse of the word cool, by the way, it's, hey, it shows lack of imagination. Of the hobby. <laughs> exactly. of the hobby. Do you have any Civivis, Edwin? I don't own any. So, Again, I'm not, I'm not against any of the I, Chinese production knives. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm not against that, but uh, everything I own usually is made in the U.S. But I, it's just part of the collection, part of what I'm into. Yeah, I love and I, I basically live through Alex for all the, you know. Russian stuff, and then I go through Spirited Whiskey for all the, you know, all the other stuff. You know, just like yeah. That. But, so no, I don't own any CBV or Wee Nights or or Ria. Gotcha. But again, I watch all the videos about it. I I know as much as you know. Well, before I actually, they have a new one that that 
that looks really cool to me that I want to talk about. But before we move on, Alex just chimed in and said limited production. So instead of, you know, small batch custom is like a, a TM. Yeah. Um, so what I was going to mention was this new Civivi called, and it's got a, it's got a terrible name. Uh, and, and, and maybe I'm not saying it right, but it's the Asticus at the Asticus. Okay. <laughs> Asticus. I mean, are you seeing this? Yep. Um, but uh, the reason I like this is that it's large. You know, the um, most of their many Wii knives are in that nearly four inch or four inch range. And that's just my my wheelhouse. I love that yeah. size. And the C Civivis uh, so far, there have been a lot of beautiful designs. I have to say nothing, nothing that's really gotten me off the couch because it's just not where my, my interests lie right now. But this new one they have coming out, the Asticus, is a 3.8 inch blade and something about the whole package. It just looks graceful, simple, and beautiful. And I think part of it, uh, well, <laughs> I was going to say part of it's the handle and part of it's the blade. I guess that would be the whole thing. The blade is a beautifully kind of upswept drop point, if that's a thing. So I guess it, it's not a thing. It's sort of an upswept uh, blade with a, with a uh, hollow grind. What, what did you call it? Like a saber grind, you know. Yeah. Going. Yeah, going kind of sweeping up towards the tip. And it's got a long swedge, beautiful hollow grind. And then and then the steel, it's got steel handles. This is a $65 knife. But it's got this really beautifully um, uh, uh, picture. What do they call it? Uh, I think they call it um, framed. What are the uh, picture framed, I think. Letterboxed. Letterbox. Okay. So basically, the the frame sits proud of the of the G10, and uh, okay. and and it gives it a rounding effect too. I don't know if you have any knives like that, but um, it sort of gives it a rounding effect in the hand. I'm watching a picture right now, and it's definitely a sexy blade. I can see that. It and is cool. A2, that's cool, and six, and it will be like sixty five. So it yep. probably go less than that. Yeah, it will also come in carbon fiber and Damascus. That's cool. Okay. Yeah, for ninety. So the carbon fiber is that overlaid G10 carbon fiber. But hey, you know, I guess we shouldn't get get too nippy, uh, too nitpicky. But you know, something I really appreciate. You look at that knife. It's just a C on the pivot. That's all you see is the letter C on the pivot. That is so to me. I love that understated thing. Uh, um, I think they do a fantastic job. The uh, uh, Civivi we, Civivi slash we do a great job of kind of keeping things clean. I think they seem to be very, very responsive to the to the market. And they're putting models every every other month, right? This is amazing. Pretty, impress pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. Yeah. By the way, uh, I wonder how. We don't need to go into this topic, but right, there's a lot of cancellation and stuff happening because of the coronavirus. Right? Yeah, yeah. So I don't know how the knife industry will get affected because of that, but I'm I'm in the tech business and all that, and we definitely are getting hit by stuff, you know, yeah. because of the coronavirus. So I wonder how some of these companies will get affected by that. I I was uh... blade shape compared to that. So what it. James, uh, maybe you can comment back. Are you referring to how it's got it's got more of a belly now, right? It's more of a uh, more it's, of a it's much wider, right? I, yeah. I like that. I usually love wider knives, right? The, this angle here is of that shape of, uh, is wider mm. there, so I yeah. think that's. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Well, yeah. uh, uh, to to your point, um, Edwin, about uh, so I, um, you know, I'm a I'm a I'm a lifelong Cold Steel fan, and uh, I got uh, a hot nut for the Voyager with the uh, the Chris blade, and uh, nice. you know, ordered one from from Knife Center, and then it was delayed, and. Now I got a, you know, I got a call from them and, and it's just sort of off the drama deepens. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. I love that. Uh, so yeah, the drama does deepen because, oh, but, but there, there is light at the end of this tunnel. Uh, compliments of Stu, our friend Stu of stone and steel. But, um, 
I think that the some of the delays have to do with with what's going on in Asia, just because uh, Makes sense. Yeah. they released this knife and there's so much, you know, people are excited about this new Chris shape and there's a lot of demand for it. And you'd think they'd be pumping them out hand over fist, but I think there are some holdups in, in Asia. Definitely. You know, I have even <laughs> searched through YouTube about the Voyager Chris and the and I, I seen videos of everything. People cutting through meat, people cutting through, <laughs> through you know, brisket pieces of huge brisket. I'm like, oh, I love this. Come on, keep, keep. I need this knife, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that sounds like Jimmy Slash on, on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy Slash. <laughs> he's always, he's there. always buying like, like I don't know, eighty pound briskets. They're gigantic briskets, and then and he. Then, <laughs> and I, I found him recently, and. And I'm very impressed by the what is that Cold Steel AD10 is the one that oh yes yes that he said at a hundred something mm -hmm. so I might get that one and I'm like okay let me look at his and this guy is coming with boxes you know like I got one but I got this other four or five oh, in God. boxes <laughs> he's he's got <laughs> that dude has has an insane Andrew Demko collection he's got like he has got multiple 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 you know custom Andrew Demko you know like. One one in each color. It's like, right. That's that's crazy. So yeah, yeah. I love the blade shape on my Haitian Zero. Oh, is Haitian? Haitian. How's that pronounced? Thank you. How do you... Oh, the, more okay. belly, less great edge. Drop more sharply near the tip. Very different jimping. I like the look of the jimping on top. Uh, I think the jimping before, correct me if I'm wrong, was a tighter, uh, a tighter run closer to the, closer to the pivot. But the new jimping on the uh, on the F3 NS is larger scallops spread further down, so you get more of this. Um, you know. Like on this Wii knife yep. 609, you got a lot of jimping. You can reach all the way up there with your thumb. I just sold this, by the way. Oh. Yeah, I sold this. I sold these three knives to, to I put them all up, and uh, one gentleman bought them all. So I'm send, sending oh. them off tomorrow. This is a nice one. I've always loved this. I, I, now I'm like, why Why am I selling this again? And then I'm like, oh, yeah, I never, never carry it. But it's so beautiful. Nice. Look at that. Big, big menacing yes, recurve. Yes. Well, and you are you're saving for I am saving know. for oh, no, no, I know I'm saving for a Spartan Harzy folder. Oh, okay, nice. yeah, nice. yeah. I, uh, I've been, um, well, you know, I love Emerson's and I love Hinderers and I love, uh, I have a, I have a Strider that I love, I've had others that I haven't. But I have a Strider that I love, and I have Microtex that I love. And to me, that Spartan Harzy, first of all, anything that Bill Harzy designs is beautiful to my eye. Everything he does is golden. And their new dagger is insane. If I had 500 bucks rattling around my pocket, I'd, I'd, have, <laughs> I'd have at least one anyway. Um, but that Spartan Harzy folder, Hati, Hati on, Hati on. All right, thank you. Hatian. That's part in Harzy. You know. What's that? <laughs> My Spanglish will be Hatian. Or oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, half titanium. Half titanium, Hatian. Hati on zero. Interesting. On zero. Very cool. That's cool. Uh, anyway, yeah. what was I saying? Oh, the Spartan Harzy folder. To me, it's it's in that category. It sits on the same shelf with all those knives, even though it's an it's a newer knife. It's not it, you know hasn't been as around as long as the Sabenza or the XM18. But to me, it, it it fits in that sort of legacy brand of super hard use, you know, thick everything kind of knives yeah. I like. In my case, in terms of non-Emerson, I'm looking forward also to the that vintage hinderer, the vintage yeah XM18. I think is I think it might be three inches or three point five inches. I think I really like that. It's like that that copper look. You know, it's like man. Okay. I'm yeah, it's it's anodized bronze, kind of like a like a, a weathered bronze, and then I think it has brass hardware, and then and then you've got the that walnut stock, like and 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 the Parkerized O1 yeah, tool I'm steel. So, I saw that. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. 
Well, that well, also definitely... comes in a 24. I'm sorry. What what did you say? I stepped all oh, over your leg. On 24? Mm -hmm. The model 24? Yeah, the XM24. It's got the four-inch blade. Um, okay. Yeah. That <laughs> Please do. Have one, have one okay. sent out post haste. So, oh, I'm sorry. Let, let me just, uh, and, and then I will put this to rest, I promise, until it arrives, and then I'll bring it back up and talk about how great it is. But let me just finish the drama, yes. the Chris drama. So after all of this, you know, I mentioned it in a podcast last week about how uh, how I felt, uh, um, how I was feeling like it was a bait and switch, but I know it wasn't. I was just feeling like, oh, geez, man, I just want my Chris. But so anyway, the uh, uh, knife center calls and says we've canceled the order and we'll wait till it comes back in and then we'll we'll let you know and um, and then I get a an email from our friend Stu, friend of the show up in Vermont. He's got a company called Stone and Steel and he sells knives at at uh, New England knife shows. And uh, I get an email from him and he's got one and he can have it sent to me for uh for less than what i was going to pay for it before so all's well that ends well i've got a, a chris voyager headed my way shortly so i will get it i will show it off and then you will never have to hear me talk about it again nice, nice, <laughs> nice. Uh, you need you know you need to cut some meat or something you know? yeah yeah <laughs> exactly so uh have you heard of uh bastinelli do you know bastinelli creations mm -hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> Uh, so I got this, I got this little, um, this little tiny, oh. it's called the diagnostic neck knife. And uh, it was inspired, the purchase was inspired by my wife. She wanted something small and karambity that she could hold in her hand while she was jogging. And, wow. uh, and I have a, uh, I have a Fox 599 karambit, which is the smallest karambit they make, I think, a uh, folding karambit. And it, it, it didn't work in her hands. It was just a slightly too big to hold in a, in a closed position. Cause you know, you've got those two rounded surfaces mating in the middle. So it was a li little too bulky. So then I, um, you know, I love Bastinelli. I have a couple oh, yeah. uh, of their knives of his knives. And uh, I thought of this, got it. And then I got one for me too, you know, so that I could test it and such. And uh, this is a great, great little tiny knife i mean it looks small in my hand and then when you get it it's it's even smaller but it's it's beautifully chisel ground you know so it's flat on that side you know like an emerson yeah, that is awesome. and then you know I, I i stropped it a little bit so it's nice and shiny but it is uh it is very sharp and you know how i open carrying it how you're carrying it it's got okay, okay so or... Yeah, it's got this tiny, tiny little sheath. I mean, it's a really small and light package it, and it hangs perfectly as a neck knife. In other words, it doesn't sometimes neck knives are weighted weird mm -hmm. and they uh, but yeah. this hangs nicely. And I am seriously considering. So I carry a, uh, a CRKT minimalist uh, underneath my work badge, you know, it's okay. hangs underneath it and it's handy and it's right there and it's hidden behind the. So I'm thinking of doing that with this. And then it would just be like that, you know, with the work badge in there. And it fits nicely right underneath. And then you need a knife to open up a, a you know, an Amazon box containing your latest uh, purchase. And you just. Yeah, that's perfect. Usually I, I, I carry also, I always carry two knives, but I'm never counting that. I also carry like a little, that griff. Oh similar. yeah. Yeah. Right. And yeah. Yeah. I always have it with me and. And it's like you're saying, it's it's very small, but but yeah. you know, it's definitely not something to jo you know. He definitely can do some serious, you know, uh, cutting. Hold hold that up to your camera so people can see the the contours of that. Yeah, let me hold it like this. And again, that. this is this one is an Emerson, but it's so it's a Fred Perrin. Fred Perrin, it's yeah, a, that is that is signature. Should, you should follow that guy because that guy is was one of those old schools uh, uh, guys, and he's you know he has a bunch of little things like this, and and it's pretty impressive. What I did is that I also like you are saying, I bought some <laughs> leather grab from from Amazon, and I just carry it you know in my neck or just like that all all day long. It's always with me. Always have and, the grab. Yeah, always the Lagriff and, and the other. No, I think that's the main one. That's the main one I'm always carrying. 
the La Griffe. But that one, that one looks, dude, that looks great as well. And I love their other, they have a bunch. They have a bunch of little designs like that. That is awesome. Yeah, yeah. The little carambity things, little pokey. Yeah. He's, uh, uh, his name is Bastian Cove. Uh, Coves or Cove. I can't remember. He's a, he's Belgian or French, but he lives down in Florida now uh, making, uh, oh, making okay. knives. And, and you'll see him test French. out French. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You see him test out his knives and the, the, the gentleman has skills. <laughs> he really, he has skills with a karambit and with a knife and he, he'll do these. He'll take a piece of paper just a regular piece of paper and roll it up and uh, make a little, you know, little uh, cylinder out of it and place it on a table. You, you see this cut test sometimes, yeah. but then, and then he'll take his knife and without any sort of wind up, he'll just go like this and the paper just falls, you know, yeah. he slices it and how, you know, just to show off how sharp his stuff is, but it's a cool test. Yeah, he. I, I'd I'd like to talk to him on this on uh, on the on the podcast sometime, and because um, his uh, his designs be, really resonate. Uh, he's always in Blade Show and posting live videos and all that. So yeah, I follow him a lot on Instagram, and and yeah, he's always testing his his blades. It's very cool, very cool. So him and Fred Perry, yeah, people should follow those guys. Yeah, uh, I follow the Instagram Fred Perry Concepts page. Uh, yeah, for yeah. Designs, I think. yeah and and it's so cool because th they have a primitive feel to them you very, know very 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 primitive very raw right very yeah, raw is the good like this good. came out from a jail or something you know this is what is this you know? yeah but but then that you know but he has his, his again i got this spider co right this is this is a design from him right from spider -Co. i love that knife this that's the street beat bowie the street beat right and you know, I need I needed to to sharpen a little bit, but dude, that that design is is great. It's great. He knows what he's doing with this. Yes, yes. He's some sort of a commando uh, martial arts champion. You know. Yeah, so Rambo guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> some Rambo, some some skinny French Rambo guy. You know, it's funny. Like, you never know. He's he's one of those guys uh, that 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 they might call a sleeper. You look at him and you're like. Yeah, you know, what's what's this guy gonna do? And then you're in a Definitely. you're yeah. in a Last bleeding year. pretzel shape on the ground. Last year I saw a video of him grabbing a a Bali song, and it's like, well, okay, let me try. And he started doing all these tricks with it. I'm like, whoa, what? This old dude doing all these crazy tricks. Very very impressive guy. Yeah. Uh, Edwin, have you ever been to Blade Show? No, no. Yep. That's one of my how you say resolution. Is yeah. To go to Blade Show and the Gathering. Those and the gathering so oh, that's cool hopefully i can do it and shake the hand for example i want to meet obviously ernie but where i have that book i want to meet tersuola oh god yeah uh, did you hear the interview uh, i did with him but yes yes oh. yes tersuola i a nice guy. Um, i want to meet tom crine right and 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 the guys from from how do you call it uh mark of the maker and and you know all those guys, but Tersuola, yeah. I got his book. You know the book. Oh, you he, got the new one, uh, the new edition. Yes, yes. Let me. I have it down here. Sorry. Yeah, the people should. If you are into knife, come on. Yeah. We need to get this is latest release. It's like forty bucks, you know. And he yeah, will this... post it on his Instagram. And he's do this. You know, again, one of those guys that you need to learn his history and the guy, you know. Another classic, right? Another historic guy there. So, I'm going to be um, I'm going to be uh, speaking with uh, Ernest Emerson uh, in short order in the next. Uh, uh, I'm I'm not exactly sure when the podcast will come out, but uh, maybe I'm speaking too soon. But we have settled on a date, and I'm really really looking forward to it. He's such a cool guy. Here's here's the thing. I I invited him on the show uh, on the on the Sunday interview podcast four times in the past year, and um, you know I didn't want to pester him, but I'm I I you know I I know how emails are. They get flushed, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, of course. And I was like, maybe maybe the maybe the ray line wasn't good. Maybe I need to relight the, rewrite the uh, you know so that it catches his eye and he doesn't just think it's a. Yeah. And and finally uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago or. Couple weeks ago, last week, 
I, I contacted, you know, I, I sent him an email and I, he uh, contacted me back almost immediately. And, and one thing I just discovered, he actually called me and left a message on my phone saying, yeah, I'd love to come on the podcast. And the funny thing is, is he called right in the middle of this barrage of sales calls. I get oh. the, Hey, Hey Josh, uh, I noticed, uh, you you're you know you want to make thousands of dollars at home well i have a deal for you oh not josh well anyway you know i get those messages all the time and i was getting them this one hour and and and, and then i see a california number i'm like i'm not picking that up and it was ernie emerson <laughs> dummy oh that's awesome i don't know if you <laughs> saw this i'll send you a picture but he just posted the prototype that he was doing of the elvia knife so he just posted the the trainer and the actual knife. Is it a reverse? Is it a Pical? Yeah. Is it a, an edge right. in knife? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He he yeah. he had a shot of him on Instagram grinding a handle scale a few weeks yep. back. And he's like, what do you think I'm working on? And I was like, well, the the finger groove is on the wrong side of that. Ooh, I know what he's working on. Yeah. So this is the Elvia design that is based on Ed Calderon. Uh, I don't know if you know that guy, uh, uh, you know, no uh, store, you know, uh, designs and all that. And, okay. And, and the LVI is basically this tiny knife that, that, uh, that is basically a self-defense weapon type of thing. Oh yeah. Bill. Yeah. So, uh, uh, I contacted them a while back and, and they were gearing up for, uh, uh, blade show last year. And so I've been kind of in, you know, they, they, he wants to come on, but, uh, it's been hard to, to, you know, nail, it's hard to nail these people down because a, they're not all in the Eastern time zone and, uh, and B they are actually primarily, they are running a business and they don't have, you know, they might have the inclination to talk to me for an hour about what they're doing, but they probably rather, be doing what they're doing because <laughs> yeah i agree you know so so uh i understand it takes time it takes time but you know if you keep if you keep at it you can some at some point have ernie emerson on the yeah, show absolutely. i'm very excited oh, that's cool. about that. i will listen to that and i'll send you a picture of the elvia prototype that he just that he just posted so Love that would be cool because there is there is a design custom by ricky laka or lala oh lala, lala. yeah Lala, he did a custom, but that custom is like a thousand three hundred dollars. If Ernie makes this and the production line, then it's more, you know, more reachable, right? More, yeah, for the masses. You know, yes, for the hoi polloi like you and me. At three hundred dollars, you know, <laughs> yeah, <you're> right. <laughs> so, yeah. I, actually, I just want to dip dip back for a second. Do you have a, a an Arius, a Koenig Arius? Uh, a Koenig Arius, no. No. Okay. Okay. That is such a, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. It, Bill Koenig has an interesting story. Yeah. I, I hope he gets, okay. I, I, I'm going to re get in touch with him. Um, yeah. I like the stories about people who, who go for broke and, and it seems like all of the knives, uh, everyone I'm talking to, it's like, at some point I had to go for broke. It's like, should mm -hmm. I get off the pot? I got to make knives. I got to, I got to make this my life. And uh, that's always inspiring for me. So yeah, and I've been surprised, and this actually have helped me, of some of your guys that you interview that they say, yes, if you see that I posted a knife, it's available. You know, yeah. just just send me a DM, and I might sell it to you. He's like, what? Yeah. Okay, let me go there. Instagram, it's like the greatest marketing tool ever. The Arius is your favorite knife. Okay, I got to get my hands on one the one of these, James. I have to be. I have. This is an unpopular position, I'm sure, but. Um, I think that that will be a knife that uh, whose aesthetics I will appreciate one, once it's in hand. It looks like it's an incredibly comfortable, obviously extremely functionally capable uh, knife. Something about the looks uh, of the blade, I'll be specific, of the blade. The handle, uh, I love the look of the handle. Something about that blade, but I think once I get it in hand, I, I will be changed because, uh, you know, people like you, James, and everyone else just say that it is just such a fantastic thing. And obviously, a lot of attention um, from Bill Koenig and uh, et al. goes into each one of those knives, and, and that comes through in, in spirit. And that sounds corny. I know that sounds really corny, but I bet, Edwin, you would attest to that. You have a number of knives, handmade knives, and they yeah, are yeah, different. Yes. 
it's like for me, the CQC6 is my, how you say, my grail knife. Yeah. But if you look closely, you know, there's some imperfection there. It's a handmade knife. It's like, yeah. but you know, that's part of the process, right? It's part of the, Mr. Alex. What's up, what's up Alex? <laughs> what's up, fellas? How you doing, man? Yeah. Oh, you, you know, I'm doing good. You know. With the Shiro talk, man. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> funny because I was carrying one today. What were you carrying? Oh. Let's see it. Uh, all right, all right. Oh, this is what I like. got today. It's a. Uh, oh, jeez. It's a Shiro Goroff uh, Sigma. It's a collaboration between Sinkovich and oh. Shiro Goroff. Oh, God. Sinkovich is actually. Man, oh God, that is so beautiful. Yeah, that's that. This was actually a knife I was chasing for years, um, but a good friend finally let his go. What is that? Four and a quarter inches? That blade? Uh, it's a little over four, I think. It's it's Perfect, a good, man. decent size, and then it's got this little tiny flipper tab that's kind of <laughs> yeah, that's kind of ridiculous, cool. but I it mean, works ri ridiculously cool, of course. Yeah, that's awesome, man. There's that. There's also the um, there's an, a design by Sinkovich that I always thought was just one of the coolest ever. I think it's called the Cannabis. Is that right? Does he have oh, something? Oh, yes. Whoa. What a I've beautiful been looking knife. I've for one of those. I'm God. still hunting for one of those. Always so. hunting for cannabis, huh? <laughs> just kidding. Yes. Yeah. That that just looks like a beautiful blade. Got to get my yeah, hand That reminds it. me of a, of a Persian, you know, that kind of like. You know, Most definitely. Like, Right. And if it's hard to capture on camera, but you, it's hard to see. But if you guys see up close, it's got kind of mm -hmm. that drunken pattern milled into the carbon fiber. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I kind of. I kind of see it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the yeah, backspacer cool. is really kind of interesting, you know. It's kind of wraps around. It's just uh, it's a beautiful knife. It's something I wanted for a long time. I'll never let this go. So, Alex, is this one of those limited productions that you were talking about before? Like the uh, F3 NS? So, th no, this one is actually a, a collaboration piece, kind of like the Kickstop model and those oh, other ones. So okay. There's only 200 pieces, and then, then that's it. Wow. Alex, those are different screw patterns than normal Shiro's. Uh, yeah, it's it's actually Sinkovich's screws. Sinkovich makes the screws for these ones. Uh, so if I need to ever take this apart, I'm screwed. I'll have to send it. I'll have to send it to Josh. You'll have to fly to Belarus. Yeah, look, you can see the right here that that pivot yep. screw is oh, weird. Oh wow, it's like a, a three leaf clover pattern, kind of. Yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting. And then um, th this thing arrived too from the Ukraine. Oh wow! Oh yes, I remember this. I remember yeah. you showed pictures of that. Look at that. That Hammer is uh, a Kalishnikov knives uh, CPM 10V with N695 uh, on top. So it's a CPM 10V core. Pretty so cool. The, so the 10V is is super super uh, hard, and then the N N would you say N690? It's N695. It's kind of a weird steel, but I've been noticing they've been using this uh, stuff in Russia a lot. And and uh, but this guy's from Ukraine, and uh, wow. he did a good job. It's it was a, actually a nice buy, pretty unique. So how long is that blade? Uh, it's probably close to four inches. You know, against the 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 Sinkovich. Uh, if I line them up. You know, yeah, pivot perfect. to pivot. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. You can tell, like, I that's my style. I like these kind of blades, you know. Yeah. But I'm so, a sucker for Persian. Where did you uh, get your hands on the on the uh, on the Kalashnikov? Did you just uh, Instagram. Okay. We yeah. were just talking about that. Just just the magic of Instagram marketing. Heck yeah, yeah. It's it it's the it's the place, man. You know, and but there, it's also the place where you can spend a lot of extra money. Um, like these things right now are going for so much money. What are they going for? I, I, I've, I've fallen in love with that knife. I know I was dissing it at first. I think it's so cool now. Yeah, those it's, are all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like everybody's asking. I saw one actually go for a thousand bucks. Whoa! Uh, 
I don't know I'd ever pay that for it. The, it was mm -hmm. actually a little nicer one, though, because it had the Timascus uh, pivot collar on it. Mine doesn't. Are, are these uh, are these uh, limited batch also, and they're never yeah. being made again? Uh, yeah. Well, I guess I can see the if if you love the design that much, I, I guess I could see you know if if you know there's never going to be another one made. Well, it's three hundred pieces total, and uh, John Sorensen is like almost impossible to get on his books. As a matter of fact, he's never reopening his books again. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I actually asked him. I talked to him from time to time just because I wanted him to modify this one. So I was going to send my, it to him. My little rotten 25 from him, you know. That's oh, the, there you go. You know? So that, yeah. Do he, he takes that thing, I think, to like 18. What is oh, it like? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Man. Yeah, it's super I, thin. Yeah, huh. I love it. I love it. So Yeah. Yeah, he's a cool guy. Very nice. Very approachable. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in the, how you say, in the, I, I'm always chatting with him, like, hey, let me know. Yeah. You know, when something open up, let me know. Yeah. Well, I told, I asked him about that, and he told me I'm never opening my books again. I'm like, oh, all right. He's like, but sometimes, sometimes I get you inspirational, know. so you never know. I'm like, well, I don't like to bug knife makers. If you tell me no, I'll move on, you know. But if you're telling me there's a chance, then I'll, I'll contact <laughs> you in a couple months. It's, it's like dumb yeah, and dumber. No, yeah. It's one in a million chance. So you're saying I have a so chance. You're saying there's a chance. <laughs> so, I, but, so I told him, I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll contact you maybe in like three or four months, see, see where you're at. He's like, please do. So maybe. So, I don't uh, know. Why? Is is he so beset with orders that that he's never opening his books again? I mean, you know, he might be being facetious about that, but is it because he's so overwhelmed with orders he can't keep up? Uh, he is very overwhelmed with orders, um, and I think it's not because he's not going to take any more orders. I think he's going to change the way he sells his knives. So probably maybe like a lot of makers now don't do books anymore. They do like lotteries and you know, like flash posts on Instagram and auctions, you know, and then they, they completely go over with no books. So got to say that I, I could see the appeal of that, um, uh, though. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I don't know if this matters. It might not matter. But can you call it a custom knife if you're just making a whole bunch of knives that you want to make and then you put them up for sale? Or is that just a handmade knife? Is a custom made uh, knife, uh, you know, it's still uh, a custom knife because, you know, for the most part, it might be most likely will be a one off. It's mm -hmm. going to have each knife's kind of going to be his own thing. And by the way, since I'm on his Facebook group, mm -hmm. he just announced he's going to make a 3.5 or uh, sorry, a 3.25 inch version of this. What is that currently? So this is the evolution. I think it's 3.7. Okay. Okay. And he's going to make a 3.25 inch, like a mini scaled down one. And Custom Knife Factory probably, uh, I think he said later at the end of the year, is going to do a run of the small ones. Jeez, so, man. That's going to be a hot seller for sure. Yeah, especially at that size. I mean, obviously, we know everyone loves that knife, but especially at that size that everyone loves, that, that 3.25. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, let me ask you guys a question. We're going to wrap it up here soon, um, but I want to ask you a question. I I, I was uh, watching Nick Shabazz today, and he did a, a video on the uh, CRKT shock. Do you remember this one, the shock? Is that the, that, the big the one? Lock? Yeah, right. yeah. It was the first with the X, XOC. It's the first knife. It looks kind of like a Ken Onion design. I don't think it is, though. First uh, knife they came out with with that lock, the deadbolt lock. The one think, that had the recall where the, the yes, lock pin the pins, yeah. would break. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's what I'm getting at. Seven hundred and fifty dollars. Um. Uh. uh <laughs> can they ask that for that knife? Now, uh, there are two questions. Could you ask that for that knife if it weren't CRKT? Say it had a different name. No one had ever heard of. Say Demarco Knife and Tool. Could Demarco Knife and Tool? Um, Ask seven fifty for that, and can CRKT ask seven fifty for that? I, how how do you go from making twenty five dollar knives to seven hundred and fifty dollar knives? 
I don't know. Just just a just just putting it out there. Mm, I'm gonna say DeMarco knives has a better chance of selling a knife for 750 bucks than CRKT does because of the fact that nobody knows DeMarco knives. It could be a custom knife maker, it could be some new fresh thing. CRKT over the years has been making budget folders and that's what they're known for. Mm -hmm. And I, I really respect the fact that they tried something that I think a lot of other production knife companies are, are might not dare to try because mm -hmm. that thing was really kind of intricate. I mean, it made a Medford, you know, look slim is how <laughs> it was built. But I, I, I respect the fact they tried that. I think it was a cool idea, but I don't think it was finished all the way, in my opinion. Yeah, that and I don't know if they were trying to go and hit that market of gold how you call bench my call their the gold, gold class line and uh, maybe they were trying to experiment with that um as a company but again for me if i go i tell you if i go more than 500 dollars on a knife uh, i'm definitely need to know that maker i need to you know i need to have some type of you know uh background relationship with you know with that maker and, and then have some type of uh, oh you got you gotta live free man you just gotta go <laughs> for it this well, one is about that's, like that's what i follow you right that's what i follow you on instagram I'm like i follow Ali. <laughs> <laughs> this thing was 500 dollars, right it, it could have looked pretty in pictures but it could have been crap you never know i i never really like <laughs> had any experience with this guy well and it, it's it turned out to be good. It's not, it's not perfect. And you'll have to wait for the video for that. But I hear it's you. Good. I hear you. Even if CRKT came out with this shock for 500, that's 250. That's a whole ZT's worth less than $750 for a knife that had to be recalled. CRKT, you said they're known for making budget knives and they are, but they're also known for making really cool designs. They have, a, so many times where I've been like, man, CRKT, if you just made this in titanium and a cooler steel, I would totally buy this. Um, and and I feel like then they have the um, the like panache, the, the panache yeah. designed by uh, by uh, by Ken Onion, and that's in a slightly uh, you know that's in a less expensive bracket, but still for them, it's you know it's high end, it's titanium and M three ninety and they, such. They had a they had a huge success with the CEO, right? Yeah, um, I, I don't know. I don't know yeah. the maker, but uh, they had an even used, bigger success but... with the pilar. Oh yeah, yeah. the pilar yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. So, so imagine the CEO in some CEO materials. You know, you could, you could, uh, you know, uh, Keith Kevin Ken. You guys know yes. him? Yes. Well, he's you know uh, he's got this incredibly sprawling. I mean, like, uh, like in <laughs> insane collection, redundant yes. you might say. But hey, everyone's got their proclivities, and and hey. but he's a. You can tell that that he is a a businessman, and a, he he seems to work in a very corporate environment. And I could see that man with a with a CEO if it had like some really sweet materials. It's a cool knife. It's a great concept for a knife too. Definitely. You know. Well, they make a custom one too. There's a full custom CEO. Oh yeah? Oh yeah. yeah from the from the original designer. From the uh, maker. Yeah. Okay. Which yeah. is uh Rogers. Rogers, I think, made the design that CEO. And um good stuff. So guys, anything uh coming up in the next couple of weeks that uh you're excited to receive or uh to <laughs> look at the look on Alex's face. Uh oh. Someone's on a tear. What you got coming? Uh I have my Medina custom Hellcat and Razor Wire Damascus is finally <laughs> done. It will be here Saturday. Uh oh, yeah. with Westinghouse Micarta and Zirconium bolsters, pit uh, pivot colors in Westinghouse. Uh, it's going to be nice. Hang, hang on. You said Medina Customs. I'm going to look this up on my... What What is it? Medina Customs? Fernando Medina uh, Custom Hellcat. I'll text you a picture on your phone. I, I have a picture of it already. Oh, okay. You're going to like it. It's it's pretty wild. Well, I mean, oh, yes. Okay, I see the model. That is a cool model. 
Yeah. That is cool. Uh, I'm such a sucker for Westinghouse micarta, and I love this idea of razor wire Damascus. Was it actually made with razor wire? Do you know? I mean, that I don't know. You, it's you can from, do uh, Well, I would assume so. It's from. Um, so I actually bought the Westinghouse, and I bought the um, uh, razor wire billet from uh, Vegas Forge. And I send the materials over to him, and uh, he put the knife together. Yep, that's the Hellcat right there. Wow. But my blade actually looks a little bit different. He made mine a little different than his regular model. It's a little bit taller of a blade with a little bit more of an exaggerated swedge. Um, by, and it's going to be cool. By the way, I don't know if you guys know this, but in Arizona Custom, you can say, hey, that's a 75. I gave you 700. And oh yeah they say yes oh really here we go yeah huh. yeah yeah so we yeah. are aware of that don't ask me what i know this but you know I, I... here i'll i'll show you guys uh here i got a picture of it let's see if it'll come up maybe oh a my bit. god nice. look at that dude that is oh, gorgeous so it's gonna be hard to see but yeah, it's it's you can see the pivot collars on the zirconium bolsters the zirconium clip yeah, and then that's the razor wire Damascus right there. Wow, God, man, that is beautiful. And that, like I like I keep saying that that uh, Westinghouse micarta is just to die for. Anything else, gents? Yes. Eddie, Eddie. Oh, uh, <laughs> what, what, what else? Uh, so this one I'm actually buying off of a very like a big time knife collector on Instagram. It's uh, called, his name is That's Not a Knife. His name's Russell. He actually lives like half an hour from me. Oh, cool. And um, let's see if I can pull it up. Well, if you can see it, it's a JD Vandeventer Ooh. gold with Westinghouse micarta, herringbone Damascus, and full Timascus. So Jeez, I'm, I'm picking that up this weekend too. You know what? <laughs> What's a up, therapeutic, therapeutic edge? edge? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in my case, I'm I'm getting I'm in in the hunt of two customs, but probably in the next two weeks, well, they will come on that Emerson's. You know, one tiger like this, full black. Oh um, God, oh, I love the yes. tiger. And then I'm getting a, another CQC six, but that is something like that. You know, dude, I love your Emerson collection, man. God, yeah, you got the best Emerson collection ever. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> how, how many in total would you say? Uh, include production and customs? Yeah, just of Emerson's, like like yeah, ballpark. Like, like 130 or so. Oh, my God. 130 you know, but I have, Emerson's? I have other nice as well. So you know, oh, 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 no, no. Okay. I mean, I mean, just of Emerson's. Oh, just of Emerson, like 130, yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, you yeah. make me feel so much better. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me put it to you this way, Edwin. If if ever you're like, hmm, you know, I'm tired of this uh, custom Emerson. I want Maybe to sell it. <laughs> well, you know, reach out, reach out. I might sure, be, sure. I might be willing to yeah. sell all of my Emersons to get one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Nice Small. spirited, awesome. <laughs> dude. Spirited whiskey's been getting some crazy stuff, man. I agree. He That's needs to stop gone. it. I'm on a, a chat with him and like, like a bunch of other guys. He needs to stop it already. He's making me jealous. Is he being irresponsible? Oh, 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 oh. It's oh. not irresponsible. It's it's just uh he sells whiskey, man. He's a he's a whiskey hustler. I oh, mean, I dude. don't know. You know, no wonder he, he's got man. money for it, you know. God, I, no. I love bourbon. I'm just saying that's a lot <laughs> yeah more than anybody I've ever heard of before. Yeah, tremendous, man. You should, are you head of the club or uh, maybe let's see on the gathering, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. all right, guys. I, I think that's me for the evening. Um, but uh, it was really awesome of you guys to drop in. I was, I was gonna fly solo, and uh, yeah, it's so much better to have you guys to talk to. So, thanks for dropping in. It's much appreciated. I'll have to send you some of that whiskey I've made. Oh, he Ooh. always says that. I'm still waiting for mine. <laughs> 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 Hey, you send me whiskey you've made, and I will send you a knife that I've made. Nice. And hopefully your whiskey's better. <laughs> All righty, guys. 
that about does it for this edition of Thursday Night Knives. I want to thank Edwin and Alex for dropping in tonight. Check out both of their stuff. <laughs> thank you, Therapeutic Edge. Check out both of their channels on, on YouTube, Cal O. PR and Alex's knife box. They both have tremendous collections and incredible grasp on uh, their areas of interest. So I want to thank you for the, uh, thank them for joining me. I also want to thank Jim behind the scenes, making this all look so cool, kind of like an MSNBC or Fox News show with all the all the windows flying around. I love it. And if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe and share this with friends, family, etc. Uh, all these little actions help in big ways. Uh, so for Jim behind the switcher, Edwin and Alex, I'm Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco saying, don't take dull for an answer. Mm-hmm. <laughs>